Whoa, whoa, whoa. Stop right there. This channel is not intended for kids under the age of 13. So if you're under the age of 13, please leave. Hey everybody, Arthur here with another unboxing video. Today we have G.I. Joe Classified Series and finally in hand, the Alley Viper. In the box is the typical G.I. Joe Classified Series packaging with some cool artwork of the Alley Vipers on the side looking like a propaganda flyer. On the left side of the package, the artwork continues with a good side shot of the Alley Viper, some more Alley Vipers at the bottom, and then we got Cobra Commander as well. On the right side of the box, you got the Alley Viper file card, so go ahead and check out those logos and look them up on the website to see what he specializes in, and he is number 34. On the back of the package, we got the same artwork we've seen before, especially if it's not a special mission Cobra Island figure, and it's awesome looking artwork, and we can actually put a pin in it and say it's done, because if you look and see... These were the last guys that I was hounding. I'm like, I want Alley Vipers. I want the Alley Vipers. And finally, we got them. And the only thing we didn't get from the back of this artwork is really the, the vehicles. And we'll see how that goes with Hasbro and how they're going to do the vehicles. But it's still awesome to say that we started with a little bit of Joe's. And now we got a full artwork piece and all the figures that are shown. Now, you're not going to be an Alley Viper without a visor. And we get this really cool visor with a logo or design on it that is in like this metallic -y blue looking paint. And uh, looks really cool. It is very, very thin, as you can see. But one thing that is nice on the inside, you can't really see it. I'm going to have to zoom in a little bit. You can actually see they had like a HUD inside the visor. They just didn't add a decal or anything. Now, when it comes to Alley Viper, you're going to have your shield, and this shield is awesome. I love the sculpted in Cobra logo. I love the fact Hasbro is painting on and sculpting in Cobra logos and not just doing stickers. It's so awesome. I like the rivets you can see on the, on the actual shield itself. The paint looks good. The design's really nice. I mean, it's a big hunk of orange plastic, but it is sculpted and has lots of detail. Like, when you flip it around... You got this awesome interior that has all the rivets. You can just see how thick the armor is. You got an arm band sort of like for it to slide his arm through so he can use the shield. He has a heads up display so he can look at his enemies through the shield. And what's even more badass is this actually rotates. So it doesn't matter how you have it on his arm and how you have him posed. You can always adjust the shield the way you want it. We get that nice, iconic-looking backpack, again, with that sculpted-in Cobra logo. I love it. Uh, you still got the three grenades. I wish they would just peg the actual grenades in so we can actually remove them. That would actually be a really cool accessory. Got a big old peg there for the gun. And it's just that iconic, freaking Alley Viper backpack. Look at all the details. Looks like a, almost like a remote or a magazine on the side of the backpack. Yeah, they are magazines. Again, those could have been pegged in where we could have used them for uh, for the guns. But still, still pretty cool. Sculpted on uh, detail on the back too, which they could have just left it smooth. I'm glad they didn't. But it's a nice chunk of plastic and definitely pays homage to the original Alley Viper backpack. Here we have the gun that goes onto the backpack and that is the harpoon rifle, I guess. Or just a sniper rifle or something. Because, I mean, it definitely has like a sniping scope on it. Or a long range scope. I guess it'd just be for grappling. Um, and it's done really awesome. I'm glad we got this. Because as a kid, the gun was actually molded into the backpack. So we really couldn't use this gun at all. So we actually get this in a physical form this time. That can be equipped in the hands and used. And it looks awesome. It's got the little hoops that you could tie a string to. Which you may want to because... This actually unports out, comes separate in the package. It was a little bit of a pain to get it ported in. It's almost like the hole was too small, but still a cool thing. And I can imagine a lot of figure photographers attaching ropes and stuff to give it that nice grappling effect with their figures. Here we have the backpack with the grapple rifle equipped and it looks awesome. It fills the dead space nicely. The peg is very, it's not really that noticeable that goes through the trigger and it just, fits nice on the backpack. 
This Alley Viper just comes with a ton of accessories. We get two knives with them, and they look pretty identical. I feel like one of the blades might be slightly taller, but as you can see, based on the sculpt, they're pretty much identical. Alley Viper comes with that standard Duke pistol that... Uh, Seems to be the standardized pistol that a lot of these Joes are getting, and I'm okay with it because this is a good mix of modern and futuristic design. Now, if you ever collected Alley Vipers back in the 80s or even just had one, you know this is that iconic submachine gun that he came with. And for them to enlarge it and modernize it, add a lot more detail, this thing looks freaking badass. It is a well done, well sculpted submachine gun. It's got a porthole for a muzzle flash looks it just looks so well done and even the magazine on the back it's a little snug but you can remove it now if all the other equipment wasn't enough we get ourselves a ak sort of type of rifle the reason i say it's an ak is you can see right here we got the safety and that's sort of like a standard design on ak's Looks like this would be a collapsible stock. It's got some nice optics with the rail system. That's It's a sweet looking rifle. I definitely like it. I like the magazine design. And of course, magazine comes out. And at first when I saw this, I was like, this looks like it could be a combat shotgun. But once I saw that safety on there, I'm like, this is definitely AK inspired. Here we have an up close look at the Alley Viper and the helmet, the face, the whole head sculpt is sculpted beautifully. I love the fact that it looks like a guy wearing like a underlining or a ski mask with a helmet on top. They do a great job with the eyes as they usually do with all these G.I. Joe figures. The sculpted in Cobra logo, it is painted, not painted the greatest on this one, but I love the sculpted in detail that's in the helmet. Got the little pegs on the side for the visor. And again, just a lot of sculpted in little details to make it look more helmet-like. And it's awesome. That orange is definitely making my camera go crazy. It's like, it's so freaking vibrant. It's, it's awesome. And we also get lots of sculpted in detail. We get the brown sheath for one of the knives. You got like his whole tack vest and zippers painted all the way up to the top. It's this figure's done really, really well. Even it's got, it has the little little clamps to you know grapple onto. It's got some battle damage on his uh, armor by the crotch. There's paintwork, paintwork throughout. It, it's mainly relying heavily on the mold and the orange plastic, which I'm okay with. But I think this figure looks phenomenal. Look at the armband. This is a sculpted in Cobra logo as usual, painted okay but it's not removable like the cobra island trooper and uh man why didn't they make the <laughs> why didn't they make the pegs blue to go with that camo but then i guess it'd be blue on the inside that's one thing they should just made him pinless that's 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 my first gripe like they should just made him pinless because it's doing that like with the marvel legends like spider-man you gotta sort of try to match it which they decided to match the orange on the inside of the arm versus the blue on the outside so I guess whatever you got to do. But again, I love the texture throughout this whole figure. The pouches have sculpt work in it. The legs. Oh, and actually I almost forgot because this piece is a little bit of a gripe because it is loose. Uh, it sort of floats the other sheath for the knife. Um, the pants look good. Got that texture. Got little pouches. Holster for his pistol. It's got the knee pads. Got the brown shin guards, and they have sculpted in damage, and then he has his boots. So a lot of detail going into this, and I know I've seen a couple reviews where people are like, oh, he just seems so plain because it's all, all orange plastic. It should have used a wash and stuff like that. Like, no, my Alley Viper doesn't need a wash. Like, if I want to add a wash to it, I'll do that, but I think they nailed this Alley Viper. Diving into articulation, Alley Viper has the typical G.I. Joe articulation, but since he is a newer figure, we will dive into his articulation. So he has the double ball joint for the neck and head and everything, so you get tons of motion out of the head. Uh, he can look full 360, he can look up that far, and he can look down. So he, lots of movement in the head, 
His arms can go up high enough to do a full T pose. We get the bicep swivel there, double jointed elbow. We get wrist rotation and the bend. This one goes up and down this way, and this one goes in and out, and this thing just gets in the way. So these parts, you know, they did opposite articulation in each hand. There is ab crunch under here. <laughs> And uh, we get those butterflies that don't really do much um, as well. But there's ab crunch in here. It's just the armor prevents you from bending him and stuff like that. Uh, you could do some sort of twists with him, but nothing too crazy. No crunching, which makes sense. If you're wearing this type of armor, you're not going to have your ab crunch. You're going to have plates and stuff that are preventing you from, from bending. So keep that in mind. He could do the splits full Van Dam. He actually has field goal kick capabilities. There is a thigh cut, double jointed knee. We get the boot cut where the boot is, ankle bend, and pivot. So plenty of articulation and all that typical G.I. Joe classified goodness. This Alley Viper is badass. And I gotta say a huge shout out to Hasbro for actually making this a figure that's not an exclusive. And a bunch of retailers had it up for pre-order, still have them up for pre-order. And allowing us to be able to army build these figures. And that's that's one of the things that I was really concerned about with the Alley Vipers and the Bats. That they were going to be some sort of exclusive. And then people are just going to gobble them up and scalp the hell out of them. But this time around, it's just really being patient. Put your pre-order in and wait for it to arrive. And this figure is just badass looking. It's what I would have wanted in a more modernized version of an Alley Viper. You know, taking that retro one and making it into this is phenomenal, in my opinion. It can actually hold all the weapons. I have him holding the shield. He has his knives equipped. He's holding this uh, AK. He has a pistol in there. And some of you might be like, well, where's the other gun? Well, there's a little sort of pegish system on the actual optics of this submachine gun. And there's like a weird little like cutout at the bottom of this backpack that you can sort of peg it into. Um, and so you can see I have all his gear equipped without any issues. <laughs> so you don't have to worry about having separate little Ziploc bags for them unless you don't want all the gear on them. But this is just a badass looking figure especially with so much expressiveness with just this little piece of visor you know you can have it up you can have it you know completely down you can just take it off and some people were saying that this is really thin and they're afraid it's going to break i think it's a good thickness it's not overly thick um and it does what it needs to do i don't really feel like the pegs are going to fall off with an adult collector um but with a, a child maybe the pegs might break but this still is a sweet looking figure. This Alley Viper is super badass. Very fun to pose. Can hold all his equipment and his guns feel nice in the hands. This Alley Viper definitely feels like an urban soldier, a SWAT member. I just love the shield. You can just get them all posed up. You can brace the gun on the shield. Give it more support as he's pushing forward through the Joes. It's... It's just an awesome figure. I can't really say it enough. I mean, get one in hand. I know some of you wish you had it now. Just be patient. And uh, you'll end up, your pre-orders will come through. But this figure is is everything that I wanted a modern Alley Viper to be. And I, I couldn't be happier. These figures are too fun to be posing up. Like, I'm having so much fun with just my diorama here. I have the Alley Viper coming out of the bar like he eliminated everybody and he's burning the building down to the ground. And that is exactly how I envision <laughs> Alley Vipers. They're urban SWAT guys. They go in, they clear the building, and then they burn it to the ground. And this figure is phenomenal. It's a great figure. I'm glad that Hasbro's making it you know, easy for people to pre-order them so they can guarantee get these figures as they're fun. And it brings back that nostalgia that we had when we first picked up that original Alley Viper in the 80s. And I'm glad they didn't steer too far away from that original design. And same with the color. We got that bright orange and blue. It's a fantastic piece. And that sums up my unboxing and review of G.I. Joe Classified Series Alley Viper. If you guys like what you saw, hit that thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the silver bell notification while you're at it so you know when I post up a new video. 
And most importantly, I want you guys to check out Toyco Toys and Collectibles. The website is down below. There's a promo code for free shipping. And there is a Toyco pre-order group. Join in. It's free. Keeps you in the know with collectibles, especially a lot of the imports. So you don't pay that secondary market pricing on those because that sucks. And it's also just a good group to be a part of so you know what's coming out so these imports just don't fly by because there's a lot of imports that are out there that are fantastic but most importantly i want you guys to have the best luck hunting keep on collecting and have a beautiful day